What is up guys? In this video, I'm gonna talk about how one of the most prolific whitetail hunters in the entire country, Andy May, consistently gets it done on mature bucks on a very, very short time frame. If you wanna accomplish anything in life, the best way to do it is to find somebody who's already accomplished what you're trying to do and then learn how they did it. Success leaves clues. My goal, like a lot of yours if you're watching this video, is to become the best bow hunter that I'm capable of becoming, so I seek out the best of the best and try to learn from them. So over the last week, what I did is binge seven different podcasts that Andy May was featured on, I listened to most of them twice, and I've taken all of that information, 10 or 12 hours of information straight from Andy's mouth, condensed it into the Cliff Notes version, and I'm gonna give that to you today. Really quickly, if you've been living under a rock and are unaware of Andy's impressive resume, you can find him on Instagram at bowhuntingdad. He's a Michigan-based hunter that just has a knack for getting on and killing mature bucks all across the country, even though most of his trips are only two to four days long because of his work schedule. Andy is, in my opinion, one of the absolute top DIY hunters out there, all although he is as humble as they come. So the first major key from Andy is that you have to be committed to continuous improvement. The number one thing that Andy stressed in every single one of the podcasts is that you cannot shortcut experience. Hunting at a high level is a marathon, not a sprint. It takes time. It took Andy years and years of being in the field nearly every day to get to the level that he's at now. Throughout all of my listening, it was very evident why Andy is at the level that he is today. It's because he continuously seeks out areas of improvement and then relentlessly pursues opportunities to overcome them. The other thing that I thought was interesting is Andy has no problem seeking out mentorship from people that he feels are better at a specific skill set than he is. He gave a specific example in one of the podcasts about somebody who's really, really good at hunting in the early season, and he felt that that was an area of improvement for himself. So he sought mentorship, he learned a lot, and now he consistently is able to go out and get it done in the early season. His goal has never been to be better than the next guy or to have a house full of giant bucks on the wall. His only goal is to continuously get better each season and to turn every weakness into a strength. And if you know anything about him, the other two things kind of just take care of themselves. He's one of the top bow hunters out there and I'm sure he has a very impressive wall at home. One thing Andy's really big on is just throwing yourself into new situations and forcing yourself to adapt and overcome build up your skill level, build up your bank of experiences so that way you can draw upon those and you have that foundation to build off of in the future. But the key to all of this is you have to get out in the field. There's no substitution for time in the field. There's no shortcut for experience. You can listen to every single podcast out there. You can watch every single video like this, but there's no substitution for just getting out there and doing the damn thing. So to review number one, you have to be committed to continuous development. Always be asking yourself, what's something new that you can do? What are your weaknesses? Where can you improve? Who can you learn from? and then relentlessly chase that improvement every single year. The second major key that leads to Andy's tremendous amount of success is that over the entire course of the season, he constantly puts himself in the highest odd situation as possible. What this means, and I'm sorry if you were looking for a way to bypass all of the hard work, is that he scouts year round. If you can figure out at what point in the season a mature buck is using a specific area and then be disciplined enough to stay out until that time, you're gonna have really, really high odds sit. And then what Andy does is he approaches his entire season that way. So from both his off season and in season scouting paired with historical trail camera data, He's built up a catalog of different areas where he knows in early season, this area generally holds a mature buck. Come pre-rut, there's usually a good buck in this area. And he attacks his entire season, putting himself in the highest odds position every single time. He doesn't just go sit and hope anymore. He's in an area for a very specific reason, and because of that, he has very high percentage sits. In one of the podcasts, he threw out a stat that every five or six sits, he kills a buck. And he's not just killing little basket rack eight points, he's killing world-class deer all across the country, and he freely shares how he's doing it. It comes down to continuously learning and developing, overcoming your weaknesses, and then working really, really hard in the field to give yourself the highest odds you could possibly have. The ultimate goal is to have high quality hunts. But Andy May is in fact human just like the rest of us and there are times when he doesn't have a mature buck pinpointed, he doesn't have a good deer located, and in times like that he doesn't just sit on the sideline or just go sit and hope that something happens, he's going to go make something happen and get himself into the game. What that looks like is he's going to slowly scout and still hunt his way into an area, push his way back to the bedding where he expects a buck to potentially be. By doing this more and more throughout the years, He's developed a skill set of being able to spot deer before they spot him, stay hidden in the shadows, move very carefully, be very patient, and he's either going to blow the deer out of there, he's going to get a shot at a buck, or he's at least going to learn the area, figure out what hot signs in there, and maybe move on to the next. But he's going to get in there, get in the game, 
and make some things happen. The other thing that Andy does often that a lot of us lack the discipline to do is to sit back a little bit and do an observation and sit. Let our glass do the work, let the glass do the scouting and locate a good buck and then make a move on him instead of just going in and guessing, going in blind and just hoping and praying. So to summarize the second main point, if you wanna be as good as Andy May one day, is that you have to do the work up front to put yourself in the highest odd situation over the course of an entire season. You need to find where those mature bucks are gonna be in the early season, focus on that area at that time. You need to know where they're gonna be in the pre-rut and then focus on that area at that time and do that over the entire course of the season. And if at any point you're out of the game, get yourself in the game by going in, still hunting through an area, slowly work your way through, scout, 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 use your glass, get yourself in the game. The third and final main takeaway from all these podcasts is that you should always lean towards the aggressive side of things. Andy got to the level that he is today and will continue to grow because he's not afraid to make mistakes. You have to be aggressive. When you're aggressive, you're constantly in the game and you learn 100 times faster than if you're passive. If you're passive, you're sitting on the fringes, you're hunting the outsides, you don't have the encounters, you don't get to learn as much, you don't get to push the limits, you don't figure out what you can get away with, what you can't get away with, and it's gonna take you a lot longer to develop the skill set and the foundation versus just getting in there, screwing up, learning what you did wrong, and then adjusting the next time you go in. It also goes along with the other two points. So when you do the work scouting in the off season and you know these areas intimately, you can go for the home run every single time because you know if things don't work out, you can pivot to another area, get on another good buck, and do it again and again and again until you capitalize. And every single time you go in, whether you make a mistake or not, you're gonna learn and then the key is to adjust. Don't make the same mistake twice. If you blow out all the deer on your access, how can you access more effectively? If the wind swirls and you get busted, okay, what wind can I hunt this on? How can I set up to minimize this from happening again? Andy also made a comment that he thinks people are more effective on out-of-state trips than they are in their home state because they're on a time crunch. Because they're on a time limit, people are willing to swing for the fences, go for broke every single sit because they know if things don't work out, they're gonna go home empty-handed. And when they get home to their home state, they think they can sit back, wait for things to happen because they have time instead of relentlessly being in pursuit of getting in the best possible situation and getting on these deer as quickly as possible. Being willing to be aggressive, to put themselves in the game and give themselves as many opportunities as possible over the course of a season. He said his eyes were really open when he started to travel to different states and he encourages everybody else to do the same because the more you learn, the more you realize how much you don't know. So the quicker you can immerse yourself into different environments, different situations, you're gonna shorten that learning curve and greatly accelerate building that foundation as a hunter. That's gonna allow you to be well-rounded and no matter what situation you're thrown into, you can have the confidence that you can get the job done. So to summarize the third point, be aggressive. It's gonna help you be a better hunter now and accelerate your development for future years. Through constant trial and error, you're gonna develop your instincts and your foundation to build off of for the rest of your hunting career. So to close things out, I just wanna share a couple last thoughts from Andy that really resonated with me. First one is don't be afraid to reach out to those people you look up to and ask them questions. Just make sure you pay it forward if you ever get the opportunity. Second thing is that all things come with time as long as you're constantly pursuing opportunities for growth. The third is when you are good at everything, you're dangerous in a lot of situations. You can evaluate a situation and determine what tactic is best for that situation, you're gonna do very, very well. And lastly, it's not just about killing the biggest deer or having as many racks as possible on the wall. It's about constantly improving, pushing yourself as a hunter, and being as well-rounded as possible. If you guys have made it to this point in the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I'm on a journey to become the best bow hunter that I can become, and I'm gonna share my entire journey, all the ups and downs, share everything I learned along the way to hopefully help you as well. But thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.